Good morning. Welcome to day seven. Thought we'd start today somewhere a little bit more interesting than just outside the hotel. So rather than just the same old boring shots, we've come here to Fourth Bridge View, kinda. Train coming over the fourth rail bridge there. And we've just done our first bit of motorway. So we've been going over a thousand miles and we've only just done our first bit of motorway. Probably about 15 miles from Perth down to here. And now we've got a bit more motorway to do. And then we're off down through to Kielda Water and on to a place called Cornsay Colliery. Yeah. All right, let's hit the road. Shall we go? Yeah, we're gonna go, go, go. After navigating the snarl of Friday traffic around the outskirts of Edinburgh, we found the A7 South and the roads started to become enjoyable again. This road would take us into the Scottish borders where I knew there was some good riding to be had. Time for a break, time for a Kit Kat or indeterminate chocolate bar that somehow survived for six days in my bag. While I fill my face, Helen's off for a drone flight to look around the landscape. Oh joy, the sandy scars of a golf course. Point taken, Annabelle. It's time to move. Sorry. We did manage some riding in between all of the stopping, I promise. We eventually found somewhere in Hoyk where we could get a drink and still see our bikes. And then from here it was back onto the A7. At an estimated 180 miles, this was going to be one of our longer days on the bikes. So it was time to get on with it. Sat-navs are great, I'd be lost without them, but sometimes they're no substitute for properly knowing an area. Just south of Hoyk, the TomTom -tom tried to send us off on a back road but the red signs told us it was closed. On we went, down the A7 for what felt like mile after mile, through Langholm, waited for the sat-nav to give us some direction. At Cannonby, Thomas Thomas threw us a left turn to get us heading back in the direction we needed to go. Finally, but all's well that ends well. It turned out the road northeast from Cannonby and through Newcastleton was a belter. Mark this one on your map for future trips up this way. After just one not really very close shear with a sheep family, we were soon into tree cover and heading for the picturesque border crossing of the dramatically named Deadwater. And no border crossing shall be allowed to pass without a photo stop. It's in motorcycling law, or at least it should be. Back in England, but we were still a good way from home. Tonight's stop in Cornsay Colliery seemed a fair lump of riding away still, as Helen gave the Hornet a drink in Kielder before we continued through the forest and past Kielder Water towards Durham. The late afternoon light gave this ride a beautiful feeling as a golden glow shone through a tunnel of trees. It was the sort of rejuvenating effect that had me tweaking the right grip just a little bit harder than I have been so far on this trip. The V-Strom 800DE handles far better on the road than its dirt bike looks would have you believe. And I was in no mood to wait in line at Cholliford Bridge. There was riding to be had, and if I'd wanted to wait in a queue, I wouldn't have taken my bike test all those years ago. Good morning, day eight. Yeah, it is. Day eight, it's Saturday. Day eight. So this time last week we were packing to leave, and now we're packing to leave for home. Yuck. The sad, aren't you? Yeah. Why don't want to go home? Yeah. Let's just carry on. Uh, yesterday's riding was a bit pappy to start with, wasn't it? The first hour was a bit vanilla. 
I mean, there's a cracking view from the bridge, although it was a bit cloudy. Yeah. As we came over the bridge. Yeah, we but came over the new. The highlight of that section. Yeah, we came over the new fourth road bridge. Um, yeah, and that was the highlight. But then once we got uh, got through all Edinburgh's Friday bank holiday traffic, not through the city, but all all the stuff on the outskirts. Once we got through that, got a bit further south on the A7, it became good again, didn't it? Yeah. Actually, made up for it. Yeah, I thought yesterday it was one of the actually for riding it was one of the one of the best days. Mm. And through the Scottish borders was it was just beautiful. It was one of perfect sort of landscape really. It was really nice. So we wake this morning in Cornsay Colliery. Not a cloud in sight. No, I can't see one. I can't see one either. Absolutely clear. Nothing. No clouds. Uh, and we've got choices. We could scoot very quickly back to the A1 and go for about 170 miles and we're pretty much home in three hours. Or we can extend it to the wiggly, windy route home that takes us from here to Durham, round Middlesbrough, down to York, York. down to Gaul, through some back roads and then so we're going to start off on the long route and see if we get tired and maybe we'll cut it short. So, should we get going? Is it time to go? Yeah, it's time to go, go, go. <laughs> If we took the longer route home, it would take us most of the day, soaking up back roads I'd not ridden for a while through Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. It felt as though I was desperately delaying getting home. Part of the ride today was inspired by a guy we met last weekend in Kirkby Stephen. He wasn't a rider, but he lived somewhere I'd heard of because it's at the southern end of a famous biking road, the B1257 from Stokesley to Helmsley. Stokely to Helmsley Road is famous, infamous, notorious. Delete as appropriate. And it was too busy to appreciate fully on this Saturday. Then at the Helmsley end, the word busy took on a new meaning. The marketplace was chocker with bikes on this roasting hot day and the bike meat feel left us a bit bewildered. After days of being in more remote parts, the sheer number of people and bikes came as a bit of a culture shock. Starting to feel oddly claustrophobic, I asked if we could move on. We carried on south from Helmsley, following our route that tried to keep us away from main roads. We were looking for somewhere a bit quieter to stop for a break. We circumnavigated York, hit the back roads past Elvington Airfield and Race Circuit, then found what we were looking for when we arrived in Howden. Has it really been a summer holiday if you don't get at least one ice cream? We were clinging on to our tour in the vain hope that we could find a way to just carry on riding. As we crossed Boothbury Bridge south of Gould, we started to debate where we'd go if we really could just carry on. Up to our left, the M62 soared off east towards Hull. A ferry to Rotterdam and then onwards, maybe? Head for the Ardennes, the Black Forest, or go south towards the Alps. Or maybe spend a night at home and then carry on west towards the Cotswolds and out into Wales. Cornwall, perhaps. In the end, reality bit, and we joined the A1 near Newark for the final hour home. V-Strom's wide bars aggravate an old shoulder injury when I'm riding at a constant 70 miles per hour, but at least the discomfort made me feel glad to get home. It had been a memorable eight days on the bikes together, and it was a groundbreaking achievement for Helen. Her first big bike trip, and all in memory of her late dad. It was good to be home, but I wanted to do it all over again the next day. And so did I.
Okay, so it is the day after the trip before. It's Sunday and we're back. We have finished our eight day, 1450 mile marathon that took us through England, Scotland, back into England and now home. So tell me about the Hornet. Hetty, uh, well, on those roads, she handles really well. Uh, she's really fun to ride and she's really economical as well and i found that on average she was doing about 65 miles per gallon which for a sporty middleweight yeah. naked is pretty impressive isn't it mm -hmm. you can travel on anything you don't need a touring bike to go touring absolutely right. do not need a touring bike to go touring um, something that's got a bit of capacity to carry carry your stuff something that's got a nice bit of grunt yeah, yeah. But I think I think the Hornet seemed to do a really really good job. Yeah. And as for this, cracking. These strong. Absolutely cracking. Yeah. Sometimes it was a bit interesting getting on and off because the roll bag on the back yeah. sort of took up some of the legroom for that. But once I was on it, never an issue yeah. with legroom. It was comfortable for that all the way. Uh, the screen seemed to do a pretty good job of collecting bugs. Yeah. Don't be getting too many of them, and also it sort of tipped a lot of the air up and above. Engines really flexible. It just was never an issue. It's never an issue. Never really had to think about the bike, which is maybe not the most professional thing to say, but didn't have to. Didn't have to think about it. It just did it. So I think we've covered it all, haven't we? Covered everything. Happy. Yeah. Enjoyed it? Yeah, really, really enjoyed it. What are we going to do next? Um, I'd say they probably need a good old clean. Mm. Yeah, I think a clean is the least they deserve, really. <laughs> should we should we get them, get them clean then? Should we, should we go, 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 go? Right, cleaning up time. Thanks for watching.